Now our next guests are the masterminds behind the award-winning West End comedy, The Play That Goes Wrong. It's been described as 40 Towers meets Morecambe and Wise. Well, now the guys are back with a brand new show, Magic Goes Wrong. Um, and, uh, and as you saw uh, a few minutes ago, they've caused chaos in our studio. <laughs> but this is, that was fantastic. That was a goodie. Because we've got sugar glass on the, uh, on the table and, uh, and a microphone yeah. underneath. And it just goes to prove um, that, uh, that you really can make something look um, sensational if you do it right. And the yeah. thing is, with your yeah. shows, is that you have every... It's got to look wrong, but be perfectly, precisely timed. Yes, exactly. Everything's very, very carefully choreographed. I mean, that we threw together in a couple of minutes, so <laughs> that wasn't maybe... Uh, excuse as me, it took us a long know. time to make that sugar glass. I've had, <laughs> I haven't had sugar in my tea all week for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this yeah. began for you guys as kind of a, an improv group at drama school, didn't it? Yeah, we all went to Lambda and... Yeah. Yeah, initially started off as an improv group, so we used to go to the Edinburgh Fringe every year and do yeah. kind of Tuesday nights and Friday night gigs and stuff. And, yeah, we left drama school and st slowly kind of moved into writing. Moved into So writing. W was there, like, a master plan? Was there something that you write, OK, this is what we want to do, this is what we're aiming for? No, not really. I think when we began, I think we just, well, we were living together and we wanted to write things that were funny and that made us laugh. And, you know, we, I mean, the play that goes wrong, which was kind of... Um, uh, you know, the sort of first big show we had in the West End started in such a small way, you know, started mm. in a 60-seat pub theatre and we just saw, thought it would be that, it would be four weeks over Christmas and... Well, that, that's, the, that's the, what's brilliant about these things, when they, when they work, when they come together. Mm. It started in the pub in Islington, transferred to the Trafalgar Studios, ended up in the West End and got big very quickly um, and, then, uh, and then you find yourself on Broadway and touring the world. So there must have been a point where you thought, well, I really wasn't expecting it to go quite like this. <laughs> it's happened, like, so, so quickly. The last kind of five years has just been this really surreal, amazing journey. So I think probably the first time it ever hit me of just like, wow, this is, this is just totally incredible, was yeah. just before we opened the show on Broadway, because there was a little point where everything stopped and we had to travel over there and move all our lives over there. And there was a little moment to take stock. But, yeah, yeah. it's been incredible. It's amazing. And then, obviously, you know, you get the fans of the show, of which there are many, and then you get very well-known fans of the show. And Penn and Teller were one of those fans. They came to watch the show and this then progressed and you've started to work them with them on this next part. So just explain that. Yeah, exactly. So Penn and Teller uh, saw the show independently. They, they saw Play That Goes Wrong in London. Um, and got in contact with us and said, do you want to do something together? A magic goes wrong idea, maybe. Uh, and we said, yeah, we went over to Vegas um, and s went and s had pancakes with, with Teller at his house. I did do. Yeah, he made his pancakes. Pancakes. Was very nice. pancakes for Teller, and we kind of thought that was a joke. Yeah, <laughs> but they really were pancakes. Yeah, they really were. It sounds like the name of another play, doesn't <laughs> it, really? <laughs> pancakes with Teller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he took us to his ho His house is all <laughs> tricked out with magic tricks and stuff. It's very cool. Yeah, As you'd want it to be. Yeah. It does not disappoint. It's really great. You go in, and there's a painting on the wall of a top hat, and then... You spend a couple of hours in the house, and as you leave, the exact same painting's there, but the rabbits come out of it. It's really cool. Oh, that is weird. Like, you know, if you lift the glass up, it's like, don't touch that, and then the whole room raises up. <laughs> it's just crazy. Oh, my God, it's like Hogwarts. Yeah. I, I, I thought you were cool. going to do the trick again, then. No. Say, no, 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 that's real glass now. <laughs> no, that really is. <laughs> this time. Um, yeah. So what, do, what, what did they... How did they help you? What were you t talking through? Because, obviously, you have two very different shows here. You've got your particular thing, which is the, you know, the brilliant way it, it, these things can go wrong. Um, but also you've got to include magic as well, which has got to be precise, and it has always, always to go right. Well, their take on magic is quite unique, I think. Quite often they expose secrets of tricks, or the trick they're doing isn't necessarily the trick you think at first, or it's done in a different way. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of subversion in, in their world as well. So we found out there was quite a, quite, quite a lot of overlap, and there's a couple of, sh uh, couple of tricks from their repertoire that have come straight into the show that kind of fit. We've rewritten the dialogue around them, but the fundamental kind of narrative of the trick kind of fits in. So there's lots of crossover. Does it ever go properly wrong? Like, properly wrong. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, very occasionally, very occasionally. Um, Does I mean, that we... matter, though? Do you kind of get away with it? Because people just think Some, it's part of the show. Sometimes it it's OK. It depends what it is that's gone wrong. Well, how it, because... bad does it get? <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes the thing that goes wrong... It, it... If there was something that was supposed to go wrong, if that goes wrong, then nothing happened. If the table didn't, so, if the oh, table if it goes hadn't right, broken, that would have gone wrong. <laughs> I would have just yeah, put a mug down and everyone would have gone, Ugh. <laughs> it would have yeah. been really boring. But what about breaking someone's shoulder? That's happened. That's I told happened. you that. We've yeah. had some dislocated shoulders. <laughs> I tell you what I've had as well is I, I had. Um, no, 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 no. Going back to the broken <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> so was that? Well, how was that? Well, that was. I mean, that was obviously really bad at the time. Dave, uh, one of the other guys in the company. He had old shoulder injuries from playing rugby. Um, but oh, he we, was already damaged. He was already damaged. But what's funny is that 
it's always something you don't expect because we take real good care of everyone in our shows. We have a lot of health and safety stuff. The, the thing that threw his shoulder up. Yeah, we do, <laughs> we do. Put that but there. The, the thing that, <laughs> the thing the that hurt him was he, he, he had to, <laughs> we are told exactly. we have to say that. Legally, we have that's to say right, we take right. care of people. <laughs> um, but he had to do a dive over a, over a chair. And one, one night there was a cushion that had landed in the wrong place. He landed on the cushion. And, and his shoulder out, mm. uh, and it's something like that. And you've never planned when you're doing he physical didn't stop comedy. the show either. Yeah. He just he just he improvised the, the line <laughs> yeah. and said, "Excuse me, I must be leaving now," and looked really pained. And we were like, "That's odd." And then he didn't come back on, he but he'd come. almost finished his scene, so we all kind of carried on. And then, and then someone else we took up, over we his like, part and later, put his costume on and came on, and we never stopped. We didn't stop the show. And like I say, everyone in the audience thought it was part of it. Part of it. That's great. Later, he had to go to hospital, and he so he went, exited the theatre, past the audience into a cab with his arm kind of in <laughs> pain. And then everybody did think that was part of the show, so people were laughing at him on the way oh, out. No, but I love that they thought we'd gone to the trouble of getting a cab and driving <laughs> yeah. it away oh my as gosh. part of the show. Um, were we in Doctor Doolittle together? We were. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there you go. Long, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Like so when was ago. that then? How old? How old? Twenty years ago was that? Oh my God! Are you <laughs> kidding me? There you go. There it is. Good. Oh, that doesn't look real. Phil, you look like you've got your you face like through one of those picture. cutouts and a ball <laughs> Yeah, good That's gracious. That's fantastic. So that was 20 years ago, was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tommy, like Tommy Stubbins. 12. Yeah. And look at you now, a multi-millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, thank you. It's thank lovely you, to see yeah. you. Um, Magic Goes Wrong is currently at the Vaudeville Theatre, um, and it's lovely to see thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.